WTSM is your local election headquarters and we continue our 2024 election coverage with a look at the candidates hoping to represent the community of El Paso at the state level. Yeah, and with all Democrats running in the highly contested race for House District 77, KTSM 9 News reporter Tirza Ortiz sat down with the candidates to go over key differences and how each one hopes to enact legislative change. Tirza joins us in the studio tonight with election coverage you'll only see on 9. Well, that's right, Andy and Monica. The 2025 Texas legislative session is going to be a big one with plenty of hot button issues set to be on the table from education to gun reform. I spoke with three of the four candidates who are hoping to represent District 77 at the state capitol and what they think, why they think they're best for the community. Four Democratic candidates are facing off to serve as a next state legislator, taking over the seat currently held by District 77 Representative Lina Ortega. You can expect to see Alexandra Anello, Vince Perez, Homer Reza, and Norma Chavez on the ballots. Each candidate's professional and political experience unique. I passed more legislation at the city level since I've been in office than any other council member. And I've always done that in being the minority in council. And we've been able to pass some really amazing legislature here in the city level that responds directly to what the state has been doing, right? Protecting our health care on the local level, protecting our books at the local level, creating a community ID to help protect community members against SB4. I'm proud to be the only candidate with both federal and county government experience. Experience. Uh, I was fortunate to serve as county commissioner from 2012 uh, to 2020 and prior to that I served as a congressional staffer in Washington DC uh, and I think that blend of experience is very important uh, when when working in government and when analyzing information uh, it's been very useful. Strong communication skills, uh, negotiation skills and have uh, the ability to understand the needs and preferences of our community and uh, I had a lot of successes on my business side and so I want to take I want to take those skills and put them on the political side for my community because those are the things that you need to take to Austin. The candidates telling KTSM where they plan to focus primary legislative efforts once in office. Expanding services for mental health um, as well as infrastructure. You know, this community has large infrastructure needs I and mean, it also needs community engagement when we move forward with those projects. And El Paso is constantly project stalled because of community conflict and really being that voice ahead of a project to get people on board I think is something that we really need in HD 77. Education is one important issue. Teacher salaries were neglected. Public education funding was left off the table because of this voucher fight. Uh, vouchers would be detrimental for El Paso and it's important that we go to Austin uh, and have an aggressive fight against it. I'm going to concentrate on education first of all because that's very important and uh, I want every child to have the equal opportunity to have a a strong ed education for them no matter what the background is of, a, uh, of their social economics. Uh, secondly, I, I plan to also offer or streamline the benefits and uh, services programs from the state for the elderly and the, uh, and the uh, veterans. But where the candidates vary in focus, land in agreement on the pressing issue of immigration, expressing that Governor Greg Abbott does not have the authority to override the federal government. Governor Abbott has really failed this community. Um, you know, having been a city council representative the last seven years, I've really seen the influx of immigration back in 2019 and then over the last few years post-COVID. And it has been really difficult to not have the support we needed from the governor. And now he's enacting laws like SB4 where he has you know, no legal standing to enact immigration law and is doing what the governor does best. Is He's creating chaos and fear and dividing communities. One of the frustrations with Operation Lone Star the state has uh, already spent $5 billion. They plan on spending another five for a total of $10 billion. Uh, there are no metrics or anything to prove that our community is safer today uh, because of the money that is being spent. Uh, you know, if, if the, if the state government was really focused on public safety, I think that money would be better spent on local grants to address the police officer shortage that we have here in El Paso and along the border. So, so he's putting in a lot of money to, to stop immigration, and I understand the flow, okay? I do understand that, that we have to stop that flow of coming in, it's just too much coming in. But we also have to say that we have to work with, with the federal uh, uh, authorities to solve those issues. And so I believe that instead of government uh, uh, Abbott trying to come up with, 
legislation, laws, things like that, that's going to affect our immigration. He should be working with the federal uh, federal government in a bipartisan way. The winner of this race will represent more than 200,000 El Pasoans in the 2025 legislative session, each candidate expressing why they are best suited to represent the local community at the state level. We are all Democrats in this race, but I, I really do believe that I have the strongest voice for this community. So I think when you look at the track record, when you look at the experience, when you look at the diversity of education, uh, I think clearly, you know, th that I, I bring to the table uh, a clear choice uh, for the people of El Paso. 36 years of experience in doing that and bringing solutions, uh, which I did many, many times for, for my customers in the, in the business world, that's what's needed. And I, based on everybody else, have the most experience, the strongest skills to be the, the best advocate, the strongest candidate. And KTSM 9 News spoke with candidate Norma Chavez to participate in the House District 77 preview, but we're not able to speak before deadline. We'll continue to reach out to Chavez and her campaign for statements that will be posted on our website, KTSM.com. Live in the studio, Tears Ortiz, KTSM 9 News.